hey, I'm going to give you a hot take. And some, some of you might not like it. Some of you might be offended by it. But it seems like anytime I breathe, I offend people. So I'm used to that. And here is the hot take. There are many situations where ham radio operators, amateur radio operators, even CB radio operators don't need a $3,200 software to find radio to do radio. And today I'm going to show you how I purchased this Hermes Light 2. I'm going to give you the build process. In future episodes, we'll go ahead and take a look at the software. We'll do some add-ons like an I.O. board. But today we're just focused on getting the Hermes Light 2 built with the filter board, the N2 ADR that you see here, as well as Well, yeah, you guessed it, the actual Hermes Lightboard itself. And so if you're unfamiliar, this software defined radio really has a lot of potential. It's a $400 radio, and that includes the enclosure, the Hermes Light itself, the, that board I just showed you, the N2 ADR board, as well as an I.O. board. And of course, we have to then pay shipping. The cool thing is, is you get to install it like you see me doing here, which I'm going to make mistakes and we all do. I want to show you those mistakes because I think if maybe you're just getting into radio, maybe you're going to make mistakes as well and you don't understand what the mistakes are you're making. Let me go ahead and show you. So here we are and I'm just unboxing this cool software to find radio. I really do think that it's an amazing quality software radio for what it is. Five watts output, does HF bands on transmit and receive, and uh, that's 160 through 10 meters and it's relatively easy to get up and running. As you can see here, I'm just going ahead and organize everything, take it out of the box. Let's go ahead and skip forward just a little bit. Hey, by the way, now's the time to probably mention that, uh, hey, but before we get started, let me just throw it out there. Uh, people are starting to lose interest in what I'm doing, and so I'm starting to go different routes. But if you do like this video today, would you please like, comment, consider subscribing? It will help me know in the YouTube algorithm as well as through my analytics what videos people are watching and where I should be focusing my efforts on. So thanks a lot. Now you might be unfamiliar, but I have a small online store and whenever I have an online store, I tend to include a piece of paper with a QR code. You could scan the QR code and you'll be brought to instructions. And I even furthermore post instructions online in each description so that you can go reference the description and be like, oh, hey, cool, there's the build guide. In today's scenario, I received the instructions and, you know, I didn't have a QR code, so I just started to try to build this. And I think it's the best thing for me in order to build and learn and really let it sink in. Everybody has different learning styles and we shouldn't discredit that and we should be very accepting of that here in amateur radio. And here you can see that I'm just kind of going through trying to figure out what I need to do. If we look at the back of the board or the left side of this board that's on the table, we'll see some GPIO pins or input output pins. And eventually what is going to happen is I'm going to attach an N to ADR board to those GPIO pins. It should look a little bit like this. Now as I slide this into the black case... What will happen, I want you to watch very closely at the, the pins. They're not actually quite aligned. So here I am, and you can cause a lot of damage right here if you try to force in this jumper that I'm putting in right now. Okay, so here I am trying to force it in, force it in. If it's misaligned and you push it, it's going to bend those pins, and then you have a larger problem. So I realize at this point, hey, I got to shift that down ever so slightly. And now the little jumper module that I'm speaking of should go on easier, but we will take a look at it from a different angle. Here we go with that angle, and you could see that I didn't get the pins all the way down. What I did find that if I didn't have it pressed on the board and I use my hands like I am now, it was a lot easier to apply pressure on both sides to make everything fit. And now I'm just going to slide it in. I'm going to give you a caution, though, is it can go into different rails, which would cause it to, to not be level on the inside it's not the correct way inside so make sure that as you're sliding this into the slots or the grooves that you get the correct slots on each side 
Next up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the faceplates on each side of the software defined radio. But I want to give you that warning yet again. This is that part where I made a, a critical mistake and I overlooked something. So I'm going to tear this back apart. If you're here watching this as a tutorial to build this, uh, don't forget to put on uh, the small metal heat block or heat sink that comes in the packaging. So you're going to see, in fact, let's just go ahead and fast forward it because guess what I do? I put all this stuff on and I have to take it apart again. And actually, before we just take it all back apart and I show you the heat sink build, I want to make another point here. I'm screwing in those four screws on each side for the face plates, as I mentioned. And on the opposite side, you're about to see where basically what I tried to do is I tried to screw it in and there's like this huge gap in the faceplate. Take a look at it right here. That gap, if I could just flip this to the side, is caused by that ethernet port. And basically it's a very, very tight fit for that ethernet port to come through that square or rectangular uh, cutout. And so I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew all four of these uh, screws slightly. And then I'm going to readjust everything and push that back in, that faceplate back in. And now, of course, the Ethernet port will have been aligned correctly and it will fit much, much better. Check this out. I'm very happy with the way it's looking and I'm, I'm excited at this point to use my Hermes Light too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the Ethernet to the computer and then I'm going to get a, a 12 volt source and I'm going to plug it into a, a battery for example. But, you know, I'm looking at this other board, the IO board. I'm going to tackle that on another day. This is when I realized that I forgot that little heat sink. You know, I'm testing to see if this is going to slide across the, uh, the, the table, for example. And I find this hole on the top of the case. And I'm thinking to myself, why would somebody, there has to be a reason somebody puts a hole on the top of the case, right? So here we go. Let's go ahead and unscrew everything and uh, fast forward a little bit because we need to get back into this thing. If you thought I was fast with my movements before, check me out after a cup of coffee. All kidding aside, I went ahead and I sanded down some of the inside of the case and I'll leave a link below where I got this information from, but I think that that helps transfer the heat a little bit better. And the only thermal grease I had or any kind of thermal anything I have <laughs> was from Bamboo Labs. 3D printing saves the day again, and I'm going to use it. By the way, this is the heat sink, and I was a little confused on which direction the heat sink went. The way you just saw it and the way you'll see it here in just a second, it's technically it's upside down. We want that thin or the most narrow part to be facing the board after we put on our cool thermal grease. Now I'm not Tronix Fix or my mate Vince or anybody who's cool and good with electronics. So here I am and this is the correct side now, the most narrow part. I'm just going to put a dab of thermal grease on each side. You could actually see the board though. There's a ton of thermal grease on there because I, I probably was a little impatient when it came to this and there's thermal grease all over the desk as well. <laughs> uh, hey, you learn next time I'll know to be a little bit more cautious and make sure that I'm putting it in the right side before continuing forward. Now, there is a tricky part with this, and the tricky part is to make sure that the heat sink will have enough clearance to fit into the case still. And, you know, hey, take your time. What I found, and by the way, this will be inaccurate as well, but what I found is if I put the screw through the heat sink, it helps kind of keep it into place. But what I also found at that point was it would be wiser to have the screw go in from the opposite direction, which eventually I would fix. And you could see I am struggling here. And this is what I mean by the heat block or the heat sink kind of having enough clearance to fit into the case. So here's a good example now when I'm screwing down I have the actual Phillips head itself on the bottom of the case and the nut is inside the case. But you'll notice it was really shaky right there. And that becomes a problem, right? Because if I want to set this down on a table or at a bench, 
I don't want it, A, scraping my nice table or uh, possibly uh, just having an imbalance where it slides off the table because it wasn't like properly on the table. And what I'll do is I'll go run to the store right now and, uh, well, I'm going to go get these. Just uh, some small feet. Surprised they didn't come with feet, you know, this whole kit being... $400 $400 or so, but then again, in the same aspect, it's like, I'll just go to the store and I'll spend $4 and I still feel like it's a great deal for this little software to find radio and uh, just put the feet on the corners. And just like that, the feet are going on the corners. I do want to point out that faceplate could still be on even a little bit better or tighter, uh, but it wouldn't be a proper episode if I didn't at least boot up Thetis and go ahead and... And at least let you hear how it sounds. So the next time we have an episode, you know what to expect as we install Thetis. Let's check it out. So here it is. I went to GitHub. I found Thetis. For you, I'll link it below. And I would appreciate if you gave me a like. With that, I went ahead and opened up the software. I read through thoroughly the end user license agreement. And then I went ahead and installed the software on my PC. After installing the software, I, I went ahead to open it. As it was initializing the radio, it gave me this error. It said I was uh, too lame for the radio and it needed to rebuild the database to make it lamer. Anyway, I just clicked yes and it went through this planning complex backward forward. I don't know what it was doing, but it did something. And eventually, Thetis opened up. Hey, now, before we get started, I... I thought of something I probably should mention. And that thing that I want to mention is that filter board, the N2 ADR filter board, because I don't know that I really spoke about it before. And just in a very quick summary, I would assume that that board is more like a, it's a board that adds missing RF filtering and transmit receive switching. So basically it's like a band pass and low pass filter to clean up that original signal from the Hermes light. Because I mean, if we look at it, that Hermes light, probably didn't have a lot going on as it was so that board really helps with the with the band pass and the low pass would be my guess Zero Delta Five, Zero Tango Bravo, is that correct? Okay, Tim, I've got you off the road. Do appreciate you checking in. Thank you very much. I uh, hope everything's going well for you and you have a great weekend coming up here, over. I need to recap this and I need to summarize this quickly. So here's the story. I did have somebody reach out to me a few weeks ago asking, uh, my kids want to build a ham radio. They want to get involved in ham radio. All these kits that I see are so overcomplicated. Uh, what can my kids build? I said, give me a little bit of time and we'll figure it out. So here I did in this episode, a build of the Hermes light with very minimal instructions, right? And uh, I was able to build it and at least get it up and running in a way that I think a, a kid, depending on their age, should be able to piece it together. Of course, not having soldering skills wasn't important in today's build in today in today's build because we were able to get through it and we were able to make this all work. And so, you know, not only is this for somebody who might not be wanting to spend two, three thousand dollars on a software defined radio. But maybe this is for somebody who's wanting to get into tinkering and wanting to get into radios and, and has just a lot, a lot of desire to build this thing out and see the final product when it works. So, hey, next time that we kind of look at this radio, we're going to take a look at the software and what we can configure in the open source software. That's the joy of this being open source and, and the software being open source is there's a lot of options and a lot of skins and a lot of stuff we can do, which you are going to see next time. So, hey, thanks for watching. Again, if you enjoy this, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And more importantly, I hope you have a great day.